Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so things change. Things constantly seem to be changing. You're expecting one thing and another thing happens. The news cycle is one beast, I'll tell you that. It's ever-changing, constantly moving. Sometimes it's totally extreme, sometimes it's boring. It's all over the place. And so you just kind of got to ride the wave and figure it all out, or at least try to figure it all out as you go. You know, we've been doing a lot of Trump versus Kamala polling analysis. At least recently, we've been talking a lot about how Kamala Harris is kind of coming to a little bit of a stall here. She seems to have a support ceiling that she can't really push through. The whole hype cycle is kind of over, cringe, and done with, and Kamala, of course, I guess, or rather her numbers, are coming back to reality a little. And while having this conversation, I was talking about the rest of the election outlook. There's still two months left, and I said there's a lot of news, there's a lot of things that are going to happen, and I said, I'm paraphrasing, but it's pretty much a direct quote, this Trump surge is not over yet. They're about to send him to prison. Judge Merchant had a sentencing date set for Donald Trump in mid-September. They're gonna send him to prison, and that's gonna send him skyrocketing in the polls. That is literally what I said. And then fast forward, less than a week later, cowardly Judge Merchant backs off and delays the Trump hush money trial sentencing to late November after the election. People are calling this the ultimate white pill. It's anything but. It's more election interference. These people know exactly what they're doing. Let's have a conversation about that. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so here's the news. This is some breaking news coming from the New York City courts. Judge Juan Marchand, who has been the presiding judge over former President Trump's so-called hush money case, has made a determination that he is not going to go ahead with the September 18th sentencing date for the former president, that it will be delayed until after the election. Uh, this had been a really fraught decision yeah. for this judge because people had observed, Sandra, that if he had have gone ahead with the sentencing, then uh, the former president could have accused him of meddling in an election. And if he decided to uh, delay the sentencing until after the election, no doubt he would get uh, hit by a lot of accusations that he was uh, acting in uh, Donald Trump's political interests as opposed to in the interests of justice. But the uh, breaking news coming to us just a couple of minutes ago, Judge Juan Mershon, the presiding judge in the so-called hush money case with Stormy Daniels, uh, has decided to delay the sentencing for the former president until after the November election. This is a big decision, Sandra. And now people are pretending that this is a good thing. Finally, the judge realized that it would have been a bad decision to send a former president to prison over literal nonsense, the most garbage, bogus case of all time. Judge Merchant finally realized that he was on the wrong side of history and decided to do the right thing. No, please do not be so naive. If that was the case, if Judge Merchant had even, you know, an ounce of ability, an ounce of friggin' ethics, he would have never taken this case to trial. I mean, this case should have been dismissed long ago, considering the circumstances revolving around this case. I'm not going to go over every single detail, because, I mean, we've covered it ad nauseum in length for months upon months. I mean, frankly, years we've been talking about this ridiculous hush money case. The reason Judge Merchant is doing this is because they know Kamala's not doing so swell. If you look at the white voters without college degrees, this is a trump base. Uh, constituency, obviously, you see his huge numbers uh, with this group. Um, you see that this is a trouble sign for Harris. She also, uh, in place like Georgia, is not doing well with white college educated voters. Uh, she probably wants to make up some ground with white college educated voters across these battlegrounds as well. Okay. An important gut check for uh, for both campaigns and on multiple levels in multiple states is what's coming out here. It's great to see you, David. You know, on the surface, Kamala Harris is leading in really inaccurate push polls, but in the crosstabs and with the best pollsters, she isn't. And Democrats know this. Trust me, they're keenly aware of this. They know Kamala Harris is dropping. Market sentiment and general populist sentiment is clearly indicating that. And so they don't want to give Trump another bump. They saw what happened during the attempted assassination. They saw what happened throughout the whole Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade nonsense in Georgia. They've seen how these cases have backfired. Of course, let's go back to impeachment. They understand this, and they know that Kamala Kamala Harris might possibly be too weak of a candidate for her campaign to be able to withstand this kind of a headline. They know that
that the American people find it atrocious, especially this hush money case. You know, people seem to give more credit to Fannie Willis's case, probably less so these days, but the whole Muffet Collectors scheme rhetoric, or, you know, just repeating that line over and over again, seemed to actually be doing something. A lot of people thought it was something serious, even though they didn't understand the facts of the case. And of course, the January 6th case, that's another one. Those two cases were always the scariest ones. Those were the cases that could have actually done the Trump campaign some real damage had they been executed effectively. But the one case that has always been viewed as highly partisan, lacking of substance, totally unserious, has been this hush money, stormy Daniels, federal elections funding violation. I mean, for Pete's sakes, the actual case itself, the prosecutor in the case, isn't even representing the federal government. He's a local DA who's a total partisan hack and took a case that the FVC refused to take and then kind of molded it and twisted it to spin it into something. And so my view is that Democrats realize, you know, they don't want to go forward with this thing. They only want to go forward with this thing if they achieve their final goal, which is putting a literal wannabe tyrant. I mean, we're basically talking about Letitia James's sister, Kamala Harris, the same kind of thing. It's about putting someone like that in a position of power and then executing all this stuff with authority. That's what the goal is. They're hoping to protect Kamala Harris's campaign so she can inevitably get elected. And then they're going to go after the orange men and they're really going to make their power play and try to put him in prison. If anything, what's happening right now, Judge Merchant delaying the case, is more reason why Donald Trump must get elected. And the whole thing is a whole lot worse, considering the latest Stephen Crowder O'Keefe-style undercover video that they released. Stephen Crowder releases bombshell footage of a DOJ official essentially confirming that what's happening in this Manhattan criminal trial is total political persecution, or prosecution as they call it. And the whole thing is disgusting. Out to get them. And that's why I like the surgery of the public. You know, it's a perversion of justice. Yeah. You know, stacking charges and like, rearranging things just to make it fit a case. No, to be honest with you, I think the case is nonsense. State levels are like the wild west. They're like idiots, they don't care, they're all political. Um, so yeah, this guy's probably going to try to lock him up, and there is going to be, it's going to be ugly. They're so obsessed with getting him. Who, who, who is they? Yeah, Alvin Bragg, yeah, who I, I've known for 15 years. Mm -hmm. He used to work in my office. Mm -hmm. so before he decided to prosecute Trump, did you know who he was? I do now. I'm not sure what he wants to be, but I know he's not happy just being the DA in uh, New York County. So now he's very ambitious. Every real estate person in New York does what he did. Nobody's ever been charged with this. Um, it's all him. Donald Trump actually reacted to the video. Just yesterday, the top spokesman, one of the top people in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan, that's a very respected Southern District, very, very highly respected, was heard saying, and was quoted exactly, quote, honestly, I think this case is nonsense. Now, this is the boss of the whole thing. Every real estate person in New York does what Trump did. Nobody's ever been charged with this before. It's a perversion of justice. He said that the DA's office was, quote, stacking charges against Trump and rearranging things just to make them fit the case. I think it is. This is the boss. I don't know why they don't do something. They ought to drop it. They shouldn't delay it. They should drop it. Drop all of it. Drop all of it. And so look, just to reiterate the point and really emphasize it, it's not time to take the frickin' white pill. There are some things to be white-pilled about, but this is not one of them. I keep seeing people mention that phrase over and over again, the white pill. Oh, what a white pill this morning. It is not a white pill. They're running away from the label that accurately describes them. Fascists who are hell-bent on abusing power and locking up their political opponents. I mean, the leftoids on Twitter are straight up admitting it. Here's a big leftist Twitter account saying, I'm speculating here, but reading the tea leaves, this suggests to me that Merchant is likely leaning towards sending him to jail. If you want to make sure that happens, elect Harris in November. They're saying the quiet part out loud. Elect Harris so we can put our political opponents in prison. They want to dissuade you from that being true by kicking the can down the road after the election 
collection in this hush money case. Give me a break. That doesn't absolve them of the fact that they're still trying to put him in prison over a non-existent crime. No white pill, please. Keep ingesting the red ones. It's so obvious what they're up to. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.